Hey everybody. Um, oh no. I misplaced my coffee. Okay, we'll just deal, okay? Um, today's the first day of Yellowtober, where, in which we read The King in Yellow, or at least the fun parts of The King in Yellow, um, by Robert W. Chambers. Now, um, this week we are reading The Repairer of Reputations, and you could find this on Wikisource, on Gutenberg, on um, archive.org. Um, there's audiobook versions of it on LibriVox. Um, there's a podcast version, which is just the chapters of the audiobook um, on iTunes. And you could also um, read the story um, on weirdmass.com, which is my um, pulp zine website or whatever. So there's absolutely no excuse for you not to read this. It also works for Victober, for those of you who are um, wanting to do Victober. Um, it also works for the books in the freezer. Um, read along thing for like short stories and I'm sure it works with like 50 other readathons that are going on this month. So, um, what I did, um, on weird mask was I put up the first chapter today, the first chapter or the second chapter goes up tomorrow and the third chapter goes up on Wednesday. So, um, we could kind of focus on chunks of this, uh, story here. Um, now, if you haven't read it yet, stop the video. Oh, real quick though, before, um, I got 10 copyright strikes on my live stream of the Wright-tober, Inktober, AuthorTube thing because I had Morrissey playing and because I just said Morrissey, I'm probably going to get another strike right now, but, um, I had Morrissey playing very softly in the background and um, I got a strike for each song. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to live stream anymore. I don't even know if this video will be allowed to be put up. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't read The Repair of Reputations yet, stop the video now. Go read at least the first chapter because that's what I'm going to talk about right now. And um, here we go. So this book was um, released in... 1895? In 1895, yeah. Okay, um, I have some notes here. Um, and basically, the story um, is about a man named Hildred um, Castang. Damn it, I just said it right like minutes ago. Castang? We'll say Castang. I'm sure that's not how you say it. But, um... Hildred Kesting is the um, narrator of this tale. So basically, what we find out in this is that the story takes place um, in the year uh, 1920. So 25 years after the publication of the book. Um, and it's kind of a... It's not like a horribly futuristic tale, but there are some things in it that are that make it kind of bizarre. And because um, we find out like almost immediately um, what an unreliable narrator Hildred is, that um, we don't know exactly what the hell he's talking about half the time. So basically, the story is, um, Hildred had an accident on a horse where he, um, fell off a horse, hit his head, and, um, had to be put in an asylum for a matter of years. And according to him, um, the thing that made him angry the most was that they killed his horse. They shot his horse in the head. And, um, while he was there, 
he came across this book called The King in Yellow, which was a play. Um, so it was the play of The King in Yellow. And he read the first act, and it was just completely boring, and he wasn't interested in it. Um, but he had heard how so many countries were like banning the book and stuff that he was curious so he he said to himself, like, knowing my state of mind, I probably shouldn't read any more of this. And he throws the book into the fireplace, misses, the book falls open to Act 2. And he starts reading Act 2, and in just the few lines that he read while trying to pick the book back up to throw back in the fireplace, um, he was just enamored and had to finish reading it. So, um, the part of this that's weird is that he had a head injury and he might be completely batshit crazy from the head injury, but, um, we're kind of led to believe that the thing that was making him nuts here was from when he started reading the second act of The King in Yellow. So he eventually gets released from the asylum and um, he, the doctor makes him pay the fee for his stay or whatever and he's independently wealthy so it's not a big deal but he's like basically saying like oh i'm gonna get even with you and the doctor's like laughing oh, okay well come back and see me whenever oh i will because um like me i'm i'm gonna fucking make you pay or whatnot and the doctor's like ha, 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 because like he probably whether or not he hildred said this or not we don't know but like if anything the doctor probably thought that he was just being a funny guy so as he goes out um he sees and this is in new york he sees that the government um is showing these new um suicide chambers because suicide is now not illegal and anyone who either from physical issues or mental issues who wants to end their life are allowed to now and um so they're going to start putting these suicide chambers um in every major city and all this stuff now are these really suicide chambers I don't know. They could be. They might not be. Um, and so he's just walking around, and he he's going to go speak with a Mr. Wild who lives in an apartment above this armor shop, this armor's shop. And the armor is named Hauberk. And... Um, he does like antique armor work and all this other stuff. And um, his Hauberk's daughter, Constantine, um, is also there. And um, we'll find out more about her later, but she's gorgeous. And um, Hildred is a little enamored with her. But he thinks that Hauberk is, the, is this exiled... Um, guy, the Marquis of Avonshire, um, who isn't real. Um, but like, Hauberk's like, uh, no, you know, like, are you going to go up and talk to that crazy guy? And Constant Constance is all like bummed out that he was saying that he thinks he's really this, um, secretly this exiled marquee or whatever. <clears throat> so his brain is just out there. And the thing that I like about this is that it's an unreliable narrator, but we can see through the reactions of the other people that he speaks with that he 
is an unreliable narrator. It's not like something where we have to wait till the end of the book to find out, like, oh, this guy's been full of shit the whole time. Like, he tells us, like, flat out how these people are responding to the things that he's saying. And um, as this story goes on, um, it gets just better and better. And, like, one of my favorite bits of any kind of unreliable narrator fiction um, will come up tomorrow. And I just, I can't wait. I'm going to, like, clap my hands. It's, like, seriously, like, one of the funnest things it's kind of sad but i think it's amazing so anyway um he's going to now go up and talk to mr wild who um is an amazing ridiculous character all on his own so um today was just like a big setup for um, what's going to happen and hopefully you're reading along and if you want to read the whole bit read the whole bit um, I'm just breaking this up so we have something to talk about for the next couple days so anyway um, Yellowtober ye king in yellow and someone um, damn it who was it someone was saying <clears throat> that um, I should rewatch True Detective and talk about how True Detective took elements from this um, and like kind of do a comparison of the two. And maybe I'll do that. Um, so let me know down below if you would like something like that and we could do that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, definitely start reading um, The King in Yellow and... Find all about find out all about uh, Hildred Castine Castine. Damn it, Hildred's um, head trauma um, and the suicide booths. So um, until next time, BookTube. I will talk to you soon.